In this video, I want to talk about robust estimation methods in confirmatory factor analysis, structural equation modeling, and path analysis when you have non-normal data. Oftentimes, when we fit structural equation models or factor models, we use maximum likelihood estimation, and maximum likelihood estimation makes the assumption of multivariate normality. In the social sciences, typically variables are not normally distributed and definitely not multivariate normal. Now, if you have slight um, violations of this normality assumption, it may not be that bad because maximum likelihood estimation to a certain extent is robust to a violations of the normality assumption, especially with regard to the parameter estimates, the point estimates of, for example, factor loadings and path coefficients are relatively unaffected. However, the standard errors for parameter estimates are affected, and so then your tests of significance may be biased, may be incorrect due to non-normality, and also the test statistics for model fit tests, for example, the chi-square test of model fit, the p-value for that chi-square may not be appropriate when you have non-normal data. And so then what can you do? How can you be on the safe side when you have non-normal data? What are options to use other than conventional maximum likelihood estimation, which might show these types of problems? And I want to discuss some of those options here and show you how you can set them up in M plus when you're estimating these types of models in the M plus software. So the first thing that you could do, or maybe the easiest thing that you could do is use maximum likelihood estimation, but with robust standard errors and test statistics. That way, you're using the same estimation method, you get the same parameter estimates as before. However, you get a correction for your standard errors so that the significance tests for your path coefficients, for example, can be trusted and you get adjusted chi-square fit statistics. And so that is an easy option in M+. Plus. You have different estimators, different robust estimators in M+, plus that you could choose. You have MLM, you have MLMV, and MLR. Those provide different adjustments. The MLM um, estimation method provides the so-called satora Bentler scaled chi-square statistic, which has been shown to work well for making an adjustment to the chi-square for non-normality. And it's easy to specify. So, for example, you would specify in your M plus input file analysis estimator equals and then the type of robust estimator that you like instead of choosing regular ML, which is the default in M plus when you have continuous outcome variables and you estimate CFA models or SEM models. So it's as easy as that. Then you get your output. It looks like normal. You don't even see it. You get the same parameter estimates as with unadjusted maximum likelihood, but your test statistics will be different and also your standard errors will be different. Now notice that when you use these estimators, then one thing that is more complicated is doing chi-square difference tests. And I'll make a separate video about that issue, how you can do a um, chi-square difference test for nested models when you have scaled chi-square statistics, where you have to take into account a scaling correction factor. So you can't simply subtract the chi-square values and degrees of freedom for um, analyses where you use MLM or MLMV or MLR because those are different from the regular ML um, chi-squares. You can still use the chi-square for the given model, but you can't do the chi-square difference test by simply subtracting as you would do normally. So that's one option. What is another option? Another option in M plus is so-called Bolenstein bootstrap method. So in that um, uh, Bolenstein bootstrap, you're not making an adjustment to your estimator, but instead you're bootstrapping your fit statistics and standard errors. And so that is called the residual bootstrap in M plus. And so that um, can also be used for non-normal data. Uh, how would you specify that? In M plus, you would say analysis and then bootstrap equals the number of bootstrap samples that you want to draw, in this case, 1,000. And then in parentheses, you would put residual. The residual bootstrap in M plus is the Bolenstein bootstrap. And so then that's another way to make adjustments for non-normality. And then finally, another option that you have is you could go away from maximum likelihood estimation altogether and pick an estimator that does not make or does not require the non the normality assumption. So that's um, the weighted least squares estimator. That WLS estimator 
can be used without making a multivariate normality assumption. The problem with this is that it only works when the sample size is extremely large. So when you're working with many thousand cases, then this can work well. Unfortunately, it does not work well when you have smaller samples. So it's really only an option for larger samples and you would specify it in the same way as the other estimators. You would just say analysis and then estimator equals WLS. I would always recommend when you try this out to compare it to maximum likelihood to see if the parameter estimates are very different. If they're very different, then I'm not sure I would trust the WLS. So again, this is really only an option for very large samples, in which case it's an elegant way to get around this normality assumption and then you don't have any problems. So in summary, multivariate normality is an issue with maximum likelihood estimation in structural equation modeling and confirmatory factor analysis. It can lead to problems with the standard errors and tests of significance. It can lead to problems to a model fit assessment via the chi-square test of model fit. And so you want to make adjustments when you have non-normal data, especially when you have problems with kurtosis, then, um, the pro then that can cause some severe issues. Also, um, when you use item level data, you want to be extra cautious because item level data are often only ordinal technically. So they have only maybe four, five, six categories. So by definition, they can't be normal. And so that can cause additional issues. Fortunately, M plus also has very good options for dealing with ordinal indicators of latent variables. And I'll make a separate video about that as well. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to this channel. Check out the description for more videos and workshops and I'll see you next time.